I went to a museum one day when I was kind of searching for some kind of path for my life, and there happened to be a William Eggleston exhibition going on at the time, and his um, images just struck me as something I needed to know more about. And that same week, I decided that I was going to be a photographer too, and bought a camera and, and the darkroom equipment that I needed to start processing my own images. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, and the city has been a huge influence, I think, in my work. It has this strange light and a kind of promise of perfection. There's um, a sense of everything being cinematically perfect with the blue sky and the birds, and a lot of people go there because they have dreams to um, change their lives or become something that they're maybe not. And with that comes a lot of, I think, that kind of underbelly of seediness or um, unease paired with the, the juxtaposition of this beauty and perfection mixed with this darker side, I think is really influential. There's many reasons behind the melodramatic effect that you see in the images. Um, I think melodrama in itself adds a sense of um, comedy to the real emotion that, that they represent. By, by making it over the top, you can kind of um, get a sense of play out of something that might be actually a lot harder to confront. The more I worked with melodrama and staging the images and using the, the tools of Hollywood in cinema to create pictures and, and scenarios, I realized that it's actually a, a very clever tool used by Hollywood because if you look at the noir um, films and um, films from like the beginning of movie making, you can see how the beautiful lighting and the beautiful actresses with their hair and makeup done and the handsome actors with their melodramatic scenes that they were acting out. All of that kind of put this glow over something that was actually much darker and violent and there was a lot of, you know, there was crimes, crime and murder and heartbreak in these films and um, all of the kind of Hollywood bubble that it would be wrapped up in would, would make it um, easier to digest and I think makes it a, a little bit more fun. The filmmaking came about after I had an exhibition in London in 2000. Eight, I think. I noticed a lot of people at the opening were coming up to me asking me what was happening in the pictures on the walls. Um, they wanted to know the narrative to what was happening to the girl in the photos, what was happening just before, just after the, I took the picture, which was interesting because they knew that the pictures were staged, so nothing happened before or after. Um, but it gave me the idea that, um, that I could make a film to kind of play around with that idea, and that's what despair ended up being. After making despair, I was commissioned by the New York Times to do a series on potential Oscar nominees for this project they do every year, and it was going to be, I think it was 13 films with these actors. And um, it was like Brad Pitt and George Clooney and these huge actors. After working on that project, I think was a turning point for me on how I looked at film because I never really looked, I never really thought that I would be involved in that at all. And after working with these actors and, and, getting, and seeing them get into a character and really um, wanting to understand what was going on with the character to be able to act out this one minute film that I was making with them, um, I started thinking about a narrative and I started thinking about how film really changes the way that um, I can communicate in my images. And this was especially important with Face in the Crowd because there is the, th the three screen installation film that I made 
as well as the photographs. And for me, they're very different, even though they were shot back to back on the same set, same days. Um, for me, the photographs really are useful um, to show the emptiness and the, the space between people and the kind of disconnect that there is within a crowd. And the film is much a much better tool for me to show this heightened emotion and this drama and um, the chaotic sense that you can feel when you're in a crowd. The production on on these projects is huge. It's um, like for Face in the Crowd, we had around 350 extras, and I think there were about 100 or 150 crew members on each day. We had four days of filming. There was about two weeks of pre-production where I would work with the costume designer and go to costume houses and thrift stores. And um, it was really interesting because I look at the the work that you have here for the show, and it's a selection of work that I've made throughout the past like eight years or seven or eight years or something. And um, initially I'm starting with one person in the frame and, and surrounded by this little drama that they're going through. And then over the years I start adding people. With Face in the Crowd, I just kind of threw in as many people as I could to make the crowd as compact as possible. And it was interesting on the first day of filming, um, I showed up to set and I basically saw every wig and every costume and every prop that I'd collected over the past 12 years since I'd started. And it was really this moment for me where I felt like all of the pictures that I'd taken over the years were kind of like a lesson or a study on how to make these crowd photos. Because if you take, if you just crop out um, one person out of the crowd, you can you can get the sense of my earlier images, or I get that sense, and everything that I'd been collecting over the years was on set that first day. The sound and the music is really important to the films. I feel like they're only half done before we start that process. And, um, and that's one thing about the films that you really don't get in the still photographs. You can add that, and it's, it changes everything. Um, I always work with the same composer so far. His name is Ali Helmwein. And he's been a friend of mine for maybe 20 years. Um, and we started working together on Despair, the first film I did. And I'll just give him music for the different sections um, when I start storyboarding the film. And um, we'll start working together before I've even shot anything. And we'll do everything in Pro Tools. We'll work for weeks and weeks on getting each little note just right and using the music that I gave to him to kind of compose or, or score our own original piece of music. And, um, and then we'll hire an orchestra and we'll record it live with, with these musicians because that's also really important. Um, I know that there's a lot of digital pre-recorded music available, but it never, it never has the same feel and fullness as a real orchestra. The thing about the real world and the fictional world that I'm creating, um, it comes into play in a lot of a lot of different ways in the pictures by using um, this melodramatic emotion and the, the staged costumes and the colors. But there's there always needs to be a sense of realness in the emotion that's um, coming through in the images. Like if it doesn't ring true to me somehow, underneath all of the um, drama and costume and saturated colors, if it doesn't ring true, then it's not, um, I feel like it's not doing anything. 